Please join me in the call to worship. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, rejoice for the Lord is in our midst. Blessed is he who comes with healing and compassion, with forgiveness and mercy. Glory to God, Hosanna in highest heaven. Blessed is he who comes to redeem us all. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday. We are so glad that each of you has come to join us and worship together. If you happen to be visiting with us, we would love for you to take a visitor's card located in the pew rack in front of you. Fill it out and drop it in the offering plate as it passes later in the service so that we can get to know you better as we welcome you to Central. As we gather this morning to celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, may we remember the qualities that allowed Jesus to far exceed the expectation of the Palm Sunday crowd. Jesus is humble, compassionate, forgiving, and most importantly, committed to following through with what God asks of him. 
As we worship this morning, may we contemplate the ways that we can be like Jesus so that we might exceed God's expectation for our lives as we seek to spread the love of Christ to the world. Come, let us worship our Lord together.
this morning as we dedicate a new music suite and prayer chapel and as we use these new spaces for the very first time, we are dedicating purpose-built space for our handbell choir, something our church has never had before, purpose-built space for our children's choirs, something our church has never had before, purpose-built space for a music library, something our church has never had before, and expanded and improved spaces for our chancel choir and music staff offices, all of that along with an extraordinary new prayer chapel. So it's great this morning to have children's handbell and chancel choirs all singing and playing in our sanctuary together, both in celebration of Palm Sunday and as a way to acknowledge the different choirs served by our new spaces. I invite all of you now to stand with our choirs for our litany of dedication. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Open the gates of righteousness, that we may enter through them, and give thanks to the Lord. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Christ is the cornerstone of our church. We dedicate newly renovated spaces for music and prayer, building on the foundation Christ has laid. May God bless the ministry and worship that happens in them. For those who will come to know Christ more fully in these spaces, we give prayerful thanks. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. can tell me what's in my basket. Bracelet. Bracelet. You already saw them. Did you already eyeball them when you walked by? Well, since I have this basket full of a lot of bracelets, what do you expect me to do with them? You think I should give them to you guys? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, you sit down. Well, these bracelets are going to be used for something else, so I'm not going to give them to you. <laughs> How does that make you feel? You expected me to give you these bracelets, and I said I can't. Is that it makes you sad? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a word that I used a lot just now is the word expect, right? And the word expect means that something that you expect to happen is something that you think should happen, right? And the problem with expecting things is that sometimes it doesn't work out the way you had planned, right? So I bring this up because on Palm Sunday, I think we all know the story of Jesus on Palm Sunday. He's coming into town. People are already there for this big festival, so they're already excited, and now they've heard that this Jesus is coming, and Jesus is coming in their minds to save them, right? This wonderful Jesus coming to town is going to become our earthly king and save us from all the bad things that are happening. And guess what? Jesus did not become their king on earth, right? 
like, like a king that sits in a palace with a crown and gives orders, right? Jesus did not become that kind of king. So it really upset the crowd because it made them sad because that was not what they were expecting of Jesus. They had this thing in their head that was going to happen, and then it didn't happen. But thankfully, Jesus did not listen to what the crowds were trying to tell him to do, but Jesus listened to who? God. God. And because Jesus listened to what God wanted him to do, it far exceeded everybody's expectation for what happens on Easter morning, which we're going to celebrate next Easter week, right? Is my favorite. Me too. I love Easter. So next week on Easter, we will have a way better expectation of what Jesus was supposed to do for us. You're going to have all the Easter eggs in the world? I'm like heaven. Okay. All right. So we are going to, I want to show you though right now what it's like to have your expectations, uh, have expectations that far exceed what you are expecting to happen. And that is that in a minute after we pray, I'm going to say a prayer first, and you go downstairs with your friends. And if you're not going downstairs with the teachers because you're not that age, we'll get you after church. But I'm going to send this basket, and not only do you get these bracelets, but there are mints underneath, so you get those, too. Doesn't that exceed your expectations? I want the mint. Yeah, that makes you really happy. All right, wait, you go wait your turn. You go wait your turn. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who gave his life so that we might choose to live with you forever, a gift that far exceeds our greatest expectations. Amen. This morning's scripture is from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 19 through 29. It is in your pew Bibles on page 956 and also available on the back of the program. Please follow along. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gates of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is good. And he has made his light shine on us. With boughs in his hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And as we've heard God speak to us through God's word, will you join me now as we open our hearts to God? God, we are here this morning only because of your love, which endures forever. You've been faithful even when we have been faithless. Though we profess our allegiance to you, we find ourselves still sometimes entangled with the empire. But with humble determination, you pursue us no matter how far we run from you. And so we lift up our voices this morning in thanksgiving and praise, saying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We give thanks for the gifts of generosity and of beautiful new spaces for music and ministry and ask your blessing on songs and singers, listeners and ringers as we lift our spirits, our voices and your praises heavenward. And today we imagine you entering through the streets as we wave our palms and we say it once a year on Palm Sunday, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord we voice this shout of excitement once each spring, but is it possible you are commanding us to hear it more often, Lord? Since we call you Lord, and we've watched your entrance and heard these cries all of our lives, will this be the year we realize that you are calling us to bring the same hope and blessing and life and triumph when people see us coming. The needs around us are so very great, hunger, injustice, war, abuse, and yet you have gifted us with more than enough resources for hope and healing and wholeness. And so let us bring light and life and love so that smiles and joy and excitement might spread like palm branches on the road and you might receive the glory and hear again the cries, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We pray in the name of our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
us pray. Heavenly Father, all good gifts come from you, dear Lord, and from these riches we bring in this offering. Though this blessing is for monetary gifts, help us remember that we may also tithe our time, our talents, our homes, and our hearts to your mission. As we embrace and celebrate our new prayer chapel and music suite that these tithes have made possible, may we remember to give as each of us have decided in our heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for you love a cheerful giver. In your heavenly name we pray, amen.
journey together 39 days ago with Ash Wednesday, and today we stand at the entrance to Holy Week. Uh, each year at Central for our Ash Wednesday services, we don't have our usual children's and youth activities on that Wednesday night. We invite everyone into the sanctuary together, all ages except for our very youngest ones, and church members from 5 to 85 receive ashes on their foreheads together. This year, Steve and Ronnie and Katie imposed ashes as members came down each of these three center aisles on a Wednesday night. It's always a great experience for me to be able to participate in that and watch rather than lead it. But our very youngest children aren't in the sanctuary for that service. So for the last few years, after the Ash Wednesday service, Katie has taken ashes out to the playground where our preschoolers usually are when the Ash Wednesday service is over. They, of course, see everyone with ashes on their foreheads, and they get curious. So Katie gives them ashes right there on the playground, and she did that this Ash Wednesday. They, by the way, receive those ashes with much more joy than the rest of us do. <laughs> A few weeks ago, I was out doing something at home out in, the, out in the driveway, and our two youngest children, Mary Jane and Joey, were out there with me playing in the front yard. Uh, they were actually running back and forth into the garage, pulling every last toy, ball, dump truck, scooter, bicycle, whatever we had out of the garage. And I'll let you guess how much of that they actually put back into the garage. But I had to go around to the, to the backyard to get something for a second. And, and when I went around, I, I watched the kids. They were climbing up on my car. I know you're not supposed to let your kids play on your car, but that's what Mary Jane and Joey were doing, up onto the hood, then up over onto the roof and sliding down the back windshield and sitting on the trunk, that kind of thing. I went around to the backyard just for a second. When I walked back around the side of the house and up the driveway, I discovered that Mary Jane and Joey had discovered the soot that collects inside the tailpipe, the exhaust pipe of your car. They were both just covered in it. I had only been gone for a second. I have no idea how they got that dirty that fast. Hands, faces, clothes, both of them, a three-year-old and a four-year-old, just covered from head to toe in soot. And I leaned down to look at them, and I said, What on earth are you doing? And Mary Jane looked right back at me and said, Daddy, we're making Ash Wednesday crosses, just like Miss Katie. <laughs> And then before I knew what was happening, as I was leaned down in front of her, she placed a cross right on my forehead. <laughs> so thank you for that, Katie. We began our Lenten journey 39 days ago, and today we arrive at the entrance to Holy Week. On Palm Sunday, our scripture text comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12. I'll begin reading with verse 12. You'll find that scripture passage printed on the back of your worship guide. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, 
Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Back in the spring of 2011, April of 2011, Julie and I went to a music festival together down in Live Oak, Florida, the Wani Music Festival at the Spirit of the Swanee River Music Park. It's nestled right down along I-10, along the banks of the Swanee River. It's one of those weekend long three day music festivals. Everybody comes with tents to camp for a few nights. In 2011, the festival was co-headlined by the Allman Brothers Band and Widespread Panic. But, but there are like 50 bands that come to big weekend festivals like that, all playing over the course of the weekend on different stages scattered around the property. Big stages and small stages and little amphitheaters just scattered around in open fields with tens of thousands of people camping all over the place under little groves of trees and along the banks of the river. There are some minimal kinds of food concessions around, but mostly you just kind of live off of whatever you drove in with for the several days that you're there. Kind of a free-for-all. Everybody just having a good time. Well, back in 2011, cell phones were not what they are now. There was no such thing as 5G wireless service. So once you got off the road and back into the park, your cell phones were mostly worthless. So it was three days of disconnected bliss. Uh, music would start on the various stages early in the afternoon, continuing late into the night. And on the second afternoon, Robert Plant was playing on the main stage. He's the former lead singer of the band Led Zeppelin. Uh, but much more recently than that, he's had a successful solo career and he's had successful collaborations with Alison Krauss. And even more recently, he started a new band called The Band of Joy. So when you go to see Robert Plant perform today, you might hear a few Led Zeppelin songs mixed in, some of those old songs lots of you know and maybe even love. But mostly you'll hear stuff from his solo career and his more recent collaborations. Anyway, Robert Plant was scheduled to perform on the main stage in the late afternoon, but early in that afternoon, a rumor started to circulate among the festival crowd, among the concert goers. The rumor was that he was going to play something he didn't play anymore, an entire set of just the old Led Zeppelin songs, just all the old hits that everybody knows and loves. And that rumor started to spread from person to person and campsite to campsite, blowing like the wind through the live oak trees, just spreading among the festival crowd. Really, one person would say to another, well, what time does he go on? Five o'clock. Really? One person would say to another, where did you hear that? Well, some old guy with long hair and sandals told me. He looked like he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> really, one person would say to another, how do you know? Well, someone said they saw the set list. It's just all Led Zeppelin songs. And word spread like wildfire among the festival crowd. By mid-afternoon, everyone had heard the rumor, and the rumor started to get embellished. <laughs> There were some really great guitar players among other bands at the festival. Maybe one of them was going to join him to play that afternoon. Or maybe even some of his old bandmates were going to show up. There might even be a Led Zeppelin reunion at 5 p.m. in the spirit of the Swanee Music Park, right? We've got to be there. We can't miss it. Until by about 4.30... The field in front of the main stage had started to fill in, people streaming in from all different directions from their campsites, crowding up toward the front of the stage, trying to get a great spot where they could see. Have you heard, they would say to one another? Somebody saw the set list. They said they did. I wonder if anyone else is going to join him until finally... When Robert Plant walked out on the stage, the energy and anticipation was just as high as it could be among the festival crowd. On Palm Sunday in Jerusalem, John says that the word spread among the festival crowd that Jesus was on his way into town. Everyone was packed into Jerusalem for the Passover festival. People had come from all over, far more than the city could hold. 
most people just camped out in tents, scattered out around the city, beyond the city walls, tents and campsites scattered everywhere. There were some concessions in town, little stalls set up to serve all the people who had arrived for the festival, but mostly people just spent the festival week living off of whatever they could carry in with them. And on Palm Sunday at the festival, John says the word started to spread among the festival crowd that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. The rumor started to circulate person to person, campsite to campsite, blowing in the wind through the olive trees, spreading among the festival goers. Really, one person would say to another, what time will he get here? Five o'clock. Really, one person would say, where did you hear that? Well, some guy with long hair and sandals told me. He looked like he knew what he was talking about. Really, one person would say, how do you know? Well, someone said they saw him yesterday just outside of town, and it's written in the scriptures. If he's the Messiah, this is how it will happen. And word spread like wildfire among the festival crowd. By mid-afternoon, everyone had heard, and the rumors started to get embellished. He's bringing an army with him. He's kicking the Romans out. We'll be free before the sun goes down. He's reclaiming King David's throne today. And rumors went on and on like that until by late afternoon, the city gate that the road in from Bethany started to fill in. People streaming in from all directions, coming out from their campsites, lining the road, first inside the city, and then where there was, when there was no more room, lining the road outside the city walls, out into the countryside, crowding up to where they think they might have a good view. Have you heard about Jesus, they would say to one another. Somebody said he's the Messiah. I wonder if anyone else is coming with him. Until finally, when Jesus started to make his way down from Bethany, the energy and anticipation was just as high as it could be among the festival crowd. Back in Live Oak, Florida, Julie and I were standing in front of that stage, <laughs> packed in with all the rest of the festival crowd, and when Robert Plant walked out, everyone went wild, cheering and shouting. <laughs> But he didn't play a set list of all the old songs. <laughs> and there weren't any special guests to join him. <laughs> Just his usual band of joy. <laughs> the festival crowd in Jerusalem packed the streets and lined the roadways. And when Jesus finally appeared in the distance, everyone went wild, cheering and screaming and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But he wasn't on a war horse. And he didn't have an army. Just his usual band of misfits. Beggars and lepers and Samaritans and fishermen. And he didn't look like he was going to overthrow anyone today. So what are we to do with our Palm Sunday expectations? Marcus Borg imagines that as Jesus is entering the city from the east, Pilate and his Roman army garrison are entering the city from the west. An imperial procession of troops and cavalry and weaponry, helmet and spears glinting in the sun with heavy sounds of soldiers marching and war horses stomping and the might and power of the empire on full display over there at the western gate. And this morning we gather at the eastern gate, expecting and cheering on something that might compete with that. And all we get is a peasant on a donkey. It's quite a contrast, isn't it? The imperial entry and the Christian one. And the processions head in from opposite ends of the city on a collision course. <laughs> it sets up the central conflict of Holy Week. Is the greater power 
the power of violence and death, or is it the power of forgiveness and love and life? David Reed was a longtime pastor at Madison Avenue Presbyterian Church in Manhattan. But before he was a pastor, he was a chaplain in the British Army during World War II. In 1940, as a chaplain, he was captured along with some other troops in his unit, and he spent the next five years in POW camps. In the spring of 1945, as the Allied forces closed in and the end of war seemed near, the treatment of POWs got significantly worse. Prisoners kept getting transferred from where they were away from the advancing armies. They were marched hurriedly for days, forced into increasingly crowded and filthy camps with little food or water. Near the end, the British prisoners that David Reed was there with were moved for a final time to a new and even more squalid camp where they were joined by several thousand American soldiers. Conditions were harsh. The men were weak to the point of death. And their first Sunday in the new camp was Palm Sunday. There was no chapel. There were no hymn books. We didn't have a choir, David said. So the men just gathered in the hard-packed dirt outside their barracks. Some standing, some sitting, some lying down, some wounded, some sick, some dying, all of us desperate, he said. David Reed, the chaplain, had no notes, no sermon manuscript, so he simply told the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem triumphantly on Palm Sunday, ready to endure whatever might happen next. And then he said, I spoke of Easter Sunday. And as soon as I said the words, it seemed so far away. And I could see it in the men's eyes. We all knew we'd either be free or dead by then. (laughs) Free or dead by Easter Sunday. There were two very different processions into town that day as rumors started circulating among the festival crowd. And between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, they represent the central question. Will we continue to be slaves to sin and death, acolytes to violence and empire? Or will we become followers of a new kind of power that enters through the smaller gate on the other side of town? confounding our expectations even as we cheer it on. The processions are on a collision course, and we'll all be either free or dead by Sunday. Free or dead by Easter Sunday. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we gather this morning to celebrate you, to cheer Jesus on, even as he confounds our expectations. Make us ever mindful of the collision course of this week and of its ultimate significance for who we are becoming. We offer our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't end services at Central without giving you an opportunity to respond to what God may be doing in your life or in your heart. If there's a way you might respond publicly this morning, I'd invite you to make that public decision known by meeting me at the front of our sanctuary. As we sing our hymn of response together, you'll find the words printed in your worship guide. Stand with me, please, as we sing.
just a minute, please? Except for you four. Come stand next to me, please. Johnny and Lynn Smith are standing to my left. They've been worshiping with us for several months now. We had a great conversation with them in my office earlier this week. They've moved here to be closer to family from Lumberton, North Carolina, and they come on the promise of a letter from the First Baptist Church in Lumberton, North Carolina. I told them earlier this week everything I knew about all of you, and they still decided to join our church, so they're, they're good people. If you join me in welcoming the Smiths to Central, would you let that be known, please, by saying amen? Amen. Standing to my right, it's Kathy Owen. Kathy is, do you mind if I introduce you as Kate Wren's mother? <laughs> She worships with us regularly. She's actually moving into my neighborhood. I'm really proud of, happy about that. But she comes today by statement of faith to join us in an official way as well. If you join me in welcoming Kathy, would you let that be known, please, by saying amen. amen. And this is Ollie Walden. Ollie Walden comes today making a public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior and as a candidate for baptism. If you would join me in celebrating Ollie's decision, would you let that be known, please, by saying amen. Amen. We've got lots of different things happening as soon as this service is over, but I hope you will make it a point to come down here and see these people shake their hands, add your welcome to my welcome uh, before you go on to what's ever next in your Palm Sunday afternoon. I have a few announcements quickly before we go. Uh, it is Holy Week. We've got several activities and opportunities for worship and fellowship this week, first of which is our children's Easter egg hunt this afternoon at 4 p.m., Kids, parents, grandparents, everybody in here, make your way to Banks and Carol Glover's house at 4 p.m. today for our annual Easter egg hunt. It's always lots and lots of fun, and this year the weather is perfect. We're looking forward to that. Friday afternoon, our, Palm, or excuse me, our Good Friday worship service uh, begins at 11.15. Our sanctuary is open for quiet prayer and reflection beginning at 11.15 this Good Friday, and then we'll start a time of corporate shared worship and communion beginning at 11.40. That service is designed to end promptly at noon, featuring our choir this year. Choir, thank you for helping us out with Good Friday. Uh, good, it's, the, it's the absolute best way to prepare yourself for Easter Sunday I've ever seen. Be here at 1115 on Friday, right here in the sanctuary if you can. Then Easter Sunday worship, 845 and 1055, two identical worship services. We'll have the same chamber orchestra, the same choir, the same great music, the same great everything at both worship services. And I'll just say this, we're expecting lots of people who aren't here today to be here next week. So if you would consider you and your family coming to the 845 service next week, that could help us out. We'd have, we'd have more room to welcome some new people in. Think about maybe coming to the 845 service, bring your whole family, invite friends, be a wonderful morning of worship on Easter Sunday. Thank you all for being present in worship today. I hope we all leave this hour of worship encouraged and emboldened be faithful representatives not only of our church but of our lord jesus christ i'm going to end with our usual benediction but i'm going to ask you to do something different stay in place for our postlude our handbell choir has one more great piece to help us go out and worship this morning bow with me please for our benediction depart now in peace and as you go may the god who makes all things holy and whole make you holy and whole put you together spirit soul and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm.